Hey, we're live. Look at that. Okay. I guess I should uh, say something before we actually start since no one is here. Well, there's two people. Hello. Two people. Well, down to one people. Hello, one person that's here with me. Um, I'm just going to give it a few more minutes to see if more people come in. And then we're going to get started on modifying this Gellius 44.3. We're testing a totally different setup from last time, and um, we're figuring it out. <laughs> Everybody wants a free lens. Yeah, I know, I'm seven minutes late. We're trying to get a better camera than this one to showcase all of the little lights in the back, but didn't work this time, maybe next time. <laughs> 4 a.m. <laughs> Nice one, Chris. Good stuff. I'm glad that you're here. Hey, Trevor. All right. Um, before we actually start, I'm going to introduce Blake, who is handling the all of the streaming capabilities while I'm just here presenting. He was here last time, and he's a big um, encouragement to this live streaming project. So thank you, Blake. <laughs> If you hear any random voices, that's him. Um, what else was I going to do? Okay, so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be anamorphaking this Gallius 44.3. And the whole idea of anamorphaking is to democratize the anamorphic look. What I wanted to do was to teach people how to create the anamorphic look with Ovoboca, lens flares, all of the good stuff using spherical lenses, which basically means it's super cheap. And I wrote a guide about it. You can, I'm going to try to post a link in this chat. Let's see if that works. Uh, there's a document in that folder. Uh, the stream is not anamorphic, not today. We can get that working. <laughs> Um, also the, the window disappeared over here okay. and we're back. Oh, we're gone. And so this is a Gallios 44 three, as you can see in this, the model number here, I usually talk about the Gallios 44 two and the reason, first of all, I've been getting a lot of questions of people asking, why do I keep saying Gallios? when the lens is spelled Helios. And if you look at the name of the lens here, it's clearly not Helios. Uh, this is Russian, this is Cyrillic. And I was corrected by a bunch of Russian speaking people that the actual pronunciation of the name of the lens is Gallius, hence Gallius. And what else? Did we succeed with the link? Just put it in now. Yay. Okay. Anamorphic, anamorphic guide, right? Yeah. Okay. So we have a link for the anamorphic guide. And since we're doing this lens mod live, I promised there would be a discount code. The discount code is live mods, I believe. We're also going to try and post it in the chat. So that gives you a 20% discount on everything in the store. That includes oval discs and all of the guides and Siri lens gears and all of that stuff. Uh, before we actually jump into the Gallius, here's the Siri. And the reason I'm emphasizing this is you can see the Siri has a much stronger oval bokeh inside. And that's from one of these inserts that I am doing today with the Helio Gallius. There we go, a slip. <laughs> So if you want to get inserts for your Siri lens, or if you want to get these focus gears, they're at the store and you can just follow the links in the chat. Okay. The Gallius 44 is a very popular lens from any vintage lens perspective. It's the AK 47 of lenses. It can take a beating before it actually stops working or before it shows any serious damage in, in terms of performance. And it's also 
very cheap and affordable. The reason that happens is because this is a double gauze design, which is the reason why most 50 mils, like fast 50s are so cheap. They all use the same optical design or similar optical designs and that allows for uh, fast lens and a cheap manufacturing cost. Uh, coupon code is live mods, I'm pretty sure. And don't miss your chance to subscribe and like this video. After all, there's like 20 people here and only three likes, so come on guys. Okay, uh, so we need the lens, clearly. And to open the lens, we're gonna need a lens wrench. Lens wrench is a very handy tool that you can pick up for cheap on eBay. And the lens has two little notches in the back. Most, if not all, Gallia's lenses are like this. And you just use the lens wrench to unscrew it. Lovely sounds. <laughs> yes, wrench. <laughs> Although it looks nothing like a wrench. And then I'm just gonna finish unscrewing this with my fingers. And that's pretty much most of the work. Now we're here at the aperture and you can see the blades. These are a little bit less than perfect. No, they're pretty clean. I thought they were gonna be oily, but they're pretty clean. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put an oval insert here so it shapes the out of focus areas and the video after that modification is done. So I'm just gonna cover this to avoid extra dust. Close it for a little bit. And these are the oval inserts. So I have a ton of them here. Haha, <laughs> I doubt they're gonna be visible over this black background. <laughs> So this is the oval insert. Um, it's a tiny little thin acrylic disc that you can paint whatever color you want. And for this purpose, I'm gonna be painting it black just to give it a clean shape. But you can do it orange, you can do it red, you can tint it any color. And that's gonna be affecting the results. So I'm just using a giant permanent marker to paint this thing black. And I don't want to paint my table, so. Just adding a couple layers, beautiful, look at this. Doesn't look good at all. And then I flip it over to the other side. Oily oil. This is the best way to paint your fingers. I should be wearing gloves, but because of COVID, I had no more gloves left at home. We used all of them. Uh, yes, I made those discs. Um, I have them, they come with, the design for them comes with the Anamorph Kit Guide, the designs for the Gellius, the Jupiter, the Mir, and some almost 20 lenses, I think, uh, all come with the guide so you can get yours laser cut. But if you feel that's too much work, you can just go on the shop or go on eBay and get these discs for me. I've been selling them for quite a while and they're fairly cheap. So you get two, you get a pair for 10 bucks, including shipping. Actually eight bucks if you use the discount. So uh, the next step is I actually wanna make this a flaring lens. So I'm gonna get some fishing line. If the disc was invisible, the fishing line is gonna be more invisible. How many lens mods do I think I've done? More than a hundred? <laughs> Way more than a hundred at this point. Uh, <laughs> Justin Gellius 44s, I think, 
30 or 40 and then two Rokinon sets, one for testing, one for confirming, over 10 Jupiter 9s, over 10 mirrors, yeah, more than 100. The series I did and redid and undid and redid a bunch of times. Meu menor público. Okay, so I'm gonna put this line here, but I'm gonna step away for a second just so I can get a colorful Sharpie. In the meantime, I'm gonna catch up with these questions here. Mm -hmm. Brazil. Uh, hey, Mazé. So I actually speak a lot of Portuguese as I li live with two other Brazilians. I live with my sister and a friend. Uh, we have a big Brazilian community here in Vancouver. So I'm speaking Portuguese all of the time. Uh, family's good. The my family in Brazil is good still, although the country is not that good. But thanks for asking. Uh, I haven't sold these modified lenses in a very long time, and I don't think I will be doing that. I'm just giving this one out and teaching people how to do the mods. It's cheaper to do the mods than to actually buy the lens from me. Um, I had some trouble with shipping things and delays with getting new lenses from Russia or Ukraine. So I've just decided to stop selling mods. And if you want to do this, you do it on your own uh, experience. It's really, really good as a learning experience. Highly recommend it. Um, does it last long on surfaces? Yes. I, I don't have COVID, but whoever gets the lens won't have COVID either. Okay, I'm going to get a Sharpie. Yeah. I knew I was forgetting something. So it turns out we can do this in blue or in red. Uh, if you guys want to decide which color, just write the color that you want to see on the on the lens and I'm going to do that for the flares and uh, maybe you'll get the special flare that you chose. <laughs> um, in the meantime, I'm going to continue with adding this string here. Where's my scissors? Red. Okay, so one vote for red. Blue. One vote for blue. Good. Love a good split. <laughs> So I'm cutting two tiny little pieces of double-sided tape just to secure the string over. Okay, red. Okay, that's a lot. Red, one red, one blue, two blue, three blue, four blue, two red. It's almost a tie, but blue is winning. So keep voting. Green. I don't have green. I got rid of my green Sharpies. I got rid of my most weird colors because green was just not a thing. I haven't met one person that likes green lens flares. Are you that person? Are you just here to mess this up? Please let me know. Um, okay. Eee. Doesn't want to go. So double-sided tape over the top. Double sided tape over the bottom. How are we doing? Still do amber. So the red is the a little more in intense version of the amber. Uh, I think next week I'm gonna do the extreme mod version. We're gonna work out this camera situation so it's easier to see the results. Uh, I haven't figured out how we're doing results today yet. But um, purple, purple would have been good. I don't have purple Sharpie, and I don't think if I use both blue and red, that's going to work. <laughs> okay, blue or red? Blue or red? Okay, I see Nitty Gritty Beats asking if they want the color of the light source, what to do with the flares. If you want the color of the light source, you just don't paint the string any color. It's going to get the color of the light source, and you're going to be happy. It's not what happens to most anamorphics. Most of them had tinted flares towards blue, purple, or uh, not magenta, amber, orange, red. So that's why I kept these two. <laughs> bam, 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 bam is asking which grease should I use? 
I'm a little off put by the question. I haven't mentioned grease yet. The only thing I said was the aperture blades are not greasy. So I haven't re-greased the lens in a while. It's not a very happy experience. Don't recommend it. <laughs> uh -huh. Yellowing, green flares. Okay, I think at this point, blue won. So we're going to go with blue. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to use the Sharpie and just color the string. And this is going to give me a very thin line through bokeh. But all things considered, it's not bad. And now I stuck the thing to the other thing. Come on. Well, this is a little more hardcore than I thought. Okay. The double-sided tape does not want to be my friend, but we're making progress here. I think. <laughs> focus ring. So your focus ring is stiff. Um, I have, what is it called? It's an airplane grease thing that I've used on the Rectolux and it worked great. But like I have a tube that's this big and I've used like two Q-tips in one whole lens. So it's gonna last like 10 years. After I add the string and take out the double-sided tape, I'm gonna cut off the leftover parts. And I don't think I emphasize this enough, but it's very important that the string is straight through the middle. I don't know, is this visible? It's a little bit out of focus. Oh shit. My bad. <laughs> is it better visible now? It is very out of focus, Blake. <laughs> um, if I put it down at the table, it would probably be just easier. Yeah. Just be sharper. Yeah. So we have blue. I can't do two colors, one on one side and one on the other, because I don't know if the stream allows you to see, but the color kind of leaks through. So now we have this beautiful disc full of double sided tape. And. We're gonna get the rear element of the Helios. I'm slipping a lot today. And we're gonna add this here sort of thing. Uh, Chris is asking, does the thickness of the string determine how intense the flare will be? Yes, not only how intense, but also how thick. So I found this string, this is a 0 0.008 inch or 0.2 millimeter width and I had thicker strings but this one gave me the best results. I never found something thinner so this is as far as my experience got me. And then this is going to go back into here. So just add it in and screw it back. Uh, Nitty Greedy is asking if this video is going to stay on the channel, and the answer is yes. The video will stay on the channel, so you can watch it whenever. The discount code is only going to be available till midnight today, so if you want to get some oval discs, be sure to rush it. <laughs> and the discount only applies to my own shop. It doesn't apply to eBay purchases. So if you miss the discount, you can still get them on eBay. VFX for Filmmakers is asking, uh, about my 0.33 diopter and the threading on the 3D print is a pain. Yes, the threading is a pain. You can adjust the height of the print layer to 0 0.15 millimeters. That's going to give you the best results because it goes in line with the pitch of the actual threads. But mine took me 45 minutes to get threaded, if that's any encouragement. And I used PLA. Hope that helps. Uh, so we added this here, and I don't really know if this is aligned with the axis of the lens, because I didn't measure anything. And also, the lens is an M42 mount. 
since we're talking about this lens, this one came from Roman at Retro Photo House. He was kind enough to send me this lens for another test video. And now I'm just repurposing it here. So if you need Gellius lenses or if you need Russian lenses in general, uh, check out his store. It's uh, got always a wide selection of Soviet lenses and great quality and great prices. So what I'm doing here is I'm adding an M42 to EF adapter to the back of this lens and there's a trick to it. So maybe it'll screw in. Please work. Okay. All right. And I would bet this is not aligned. I really bet this is not aligned. Uh, the discount code is on this chat, but it's also live mods or live mod. Not really sure. Try both. <laughs> this came together very last minute, guys. So we're still getting our pace here. Uh, thanks for joining. And I see there's 36 people and only 17 likes, 18 likes. Good. Um, hit that like button, please. We're trying to do something. <laughs> Um, yay, I'm glad you, you're enjoying the, the new guide, VFX for Filmmakers. Uh, it has a lot of work put into it. Okay, so this lens, I don't think it's aligned. Hence, I got a camera here to give me some help. We got a 5D, gigantic 5D Mark III. And we're going to mount this lens on it. The good thing about the prism is you can actually see through. So hopefully you can see through that the oval is not aligned at all. Uh, can we? Yeah, you can totally see it. All right, so we can see that it's not aligned at all. And this is where this particular adapter comes to play, which is I'm gonna take out the lens. Uh, first I need to see how skewed it is. So it has to go that way counterclockwise, which means it's clockwise backwards. So I'm going to take this out, put this back in here. And this next step you can do by eye, but there's also some logic to it. So uh, let me just catch up on these questions here. What do I think of the two to one aspect ratio? Uh, Netflix has been doing that a lot, two to one and 2.2 to one. They give a little bit of black bars on top and bottom. What a thought that I've been struggling actually with not going to the theaters and just watching stuff on TV is a narrower aspect ratio sure makes it more cinematic, but it also means that you have less image. Like the image is effectively smaller. So that's backwards in terms of immersion, like a bigger image would immerse you more while a smaller image would immerse you less. Just thoughts. Um, we even witnessed that at Langara with the people showing their movies and the theater was in 16 by nine. Oh yeah, it's true. Yeah, so yeah, at the screenings for our graduation films, it was just like that, that was the problem. Okay, back to this mod. The thing is skewed. I know it's about 30 degrees from what we saw. And I want to adjust it, but I don't want to open the lens back again. And that's what's cool about this particular M42 adapter. It has these three tiny screws. There's one here, one here, and one here. And they, I'm just going to lock this open. One sec, guys. Okay. No, there's one more stop. Good. So they allow me to rotate the adapter on itself. So I'm going to loosen these. And the M42 adapter comes with this little key. So your life is easier. Where is the third one? Here. Ta -da. And now I can freely rotate the adapter. Yeah. And this makes it much easier for realigning the oval without opening the lens. This is such a time, like a lifesaver when it comes to modding M42 lenses. I would say the first 30 lenses that I modded when I got to this point and I didn't have a rotating adapter, 
I would go back in, open the lens, adjust the oval, close it, put it on the camera, look it, and until the last try, it wasn't working. So it was like five or six times of doing this. So these rotating adapters are a big, big time saver. Um, I missed a bunch of questions. Was anyone trying to buy that Koa full FVG package on eBay today? Not me. <laughs> uh, oh, look at that. The phone screens are two to one or 2.2 .2 to one. And the Netflix shows just show perfectly. Interesting. I didn't know that. Thank you very much. My phone is, I have no clue, to be honest. <laughs> anyway, back to this. So what I know is this little pin is perpendicular to how the lens is oriented on the camera. So if I put the oval straight down and I align this the hole on the EF mount to be perpendicular with the oval, that should do the trick the next time I mount it onto the camera. Um, here we go. So this is almost there. I'm just going to tighten it up a little bit. One. Two, three. Okay, might be a little skewed still, but this is going this way and that's going that way. So theoretically, should be right. Maybe I know what I'm doing. Let's get our 5D back. And no, it's not. Here we go. Look at that. It's mounted properly. Isn't it amazing? <laughs> uh, yes, the channel name did change. It was about two or three weeks ago when I was doing a bunch of upgrades to uh, the banner, my landing page, and I realized that it's much easier to tell people to look up Anamorphic on a Budget on YouTube instead of telling them to look up Chitu Fahadanks because three quarters of the people watching this video probably can't spell my name or my last name. So I thought it would be easier to make people find me instead of hiding. That's why I changed. So we're now anamorphic on a budget. Um, yes, Chris, that rotating mount saves time. But yeah, now if we look at the mount, this is actually working and this lens is, well, it's, a little bit skewed, but I'm gonna fix it in a little bit. And the lens is ready to go. I'm just gonna try to figure out how we're gonna make this visible to you guys. Will this camera power up? It did. Will it connect to a lens? It did. Wow, the battery's like zero. Um, any ideas? Hold on. Um, YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. Huh, crazy. <laughs> so we're frying the computer for sure. Um, Mankind Film is asking if I get affiliate money from Amazon. I do not. I barely recommend anything on Amazon. So doesn't happen, but I do get some stuff from eBay. So if you have to choose between eBay or Amazon, Get it on eBay. Um, did I add that little green tape on this batter? Wow. This camera used to be mine. <laughs> was it? This camera was not mine. I sold mine. <laughs> um, so now this is better. We're back with the camera. And yes, Tito Faraday. Very accurate. That's exactly my name. <laughs> uh, I think this battery is more dead than the other one because it doesn't even power. Power will it? I doubt it. Okay, so we're here having technical issues at the very end of this process. Like this camera doesn't even take this USB. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this one's back. Okay, now there's another challenge to this, which is how 
like this challenge also applies to you. How yeah. are we gonna do to get a winner out of the list of people that are watching this? Um, because I know how to pick a winner from comments, but I don't know how to pick a winner from live viewers. Um, That's another thing. <laughs> If anyone has an answer out there, please uh, just don't rig it to be your name. Also, you, please. People can comment on this video right now. At least they should be able to. So if everyone who's watching live can comment, All right. I think we should be able to select from that. Either that or when the stream ends, they can comment on it and we can select that. Okay. It kind of takes away the fun of just like that's, picking the winner true. right away. Thanks, Aram. Um, thank you so much. So if everyone that's watching this wants to leave a comment in the video itself, not on the chat, uh, we're going to use that to pick the winner for this mod. And uh, we're going to, I'm going to announce it right here. So let's see how that's going to work. Just take a moment for you to write stuff in the comments. Um, in the meantime, questions, comment, please. Comment and not live chat. Uh, hey, Bernardo, I am welcome to the channel. I am Brazilian. I speak Portuguese, but Brazilian Portuguese, which is a little different from Portugal Portuguese. Ah, oh, apparently they can't leave comments until the live is over. Oh, okay. Hmm. -hmm. trying to look it up right now. Okay. Yeah. Last time we took 30 minutes to set up and it wasn't enough. So we figured this time we're going to take an hour to set up. It also wasn't enough. Uh, <laughs> maybe next time we'll take two hours to set up and everything's going to go smooth. Um, yeah. Uh, sorry guys, that was a uh, misinformation about commenting while we're live. Apparently that is not a thing that happens. Um, uh, Sofian, I like your suggestion about give it to someone who's really struggling. I'm going to do that with another lens and a separate, uh, raffle, I guess. But yes, that's something that I want to work towards in this channel, which is to help out people that don't have the same access to equipment and information and courses and all of those things. Um, so thanks. In Portuguese, essa é a minha voz. Uh, Para o Miguel que está perguntando como eu falo em português, essa é a minha voz. Now we're back to English. <laughs> Hey, Terrence, nice to see you here. Uh, you're going for the FVD 16. I just got the 35A. Uh, Rapido is shipping it up today, and hopefully it'll be here next week. I haven't tried it out ever. It's been a while since I had a variable diopter. And I guess I'm increasing the number of anamorphic lenses that I have at home because I just got an Elmoscope 2 in the mail yesterday. This is a smooth video. Is this a smooth video? Oh, well, thank you. I guess. I got a Zcam E1 somewhere, but sold off uh, Black Magic. Yeah, we were trying to get a second camera going with, since we're talking about the GH5, we try to get a second camera going with the GH5 to highlight the beautiful background that you guys can't see. But the Lumix app was just refusing to work and uh, we had to either start or be more late and seven minutes late was the best that we could do. Thoughts on the Siri 35 mil anamorphic? Um, do we have one? I think I saw somebody posting about it in the group, on the Facebook group yesterday. But when I went to look for the original post, it was gone, so can't say much about it. I am in Canada. Yes, I've been in Canada since mid 2014. So this is now six years since I've been here. Uh, Team Maestro, that was my bad about the comments. I hadn't figured out that comments could not be written while the live is going on. 
and oh now you are 32 people and 30 likes there's only two people here that haven't liked this video just uh if you want to go ahead and like and subscribe that's a great moment i'm just tackling the questions here while we try to figure out how we're going to give out this lens uh in real time uh Chris, about the Lomos. Did I end up getting my Lomos? I have two of them, the 35 and the 50, just as uh, I had last week, but the 75 is still missing in action. Or missing in service, I guess, in my S. Fuji has a nice app for webcams. I think almost everyone has it. We wanted to use two Sony cameras, but then switching between them was not going to be fun. So we ended up giving up on this idea. And uh, now we're here. So at IBC, Siri apparently said they're working on wider 25 and 35 mil as a priority for their anamorphic lineup. And that's very inspiring because the 50 mil is kind of tight. I'm, I have a video about cheating it to make it wider, but it's not the same. Like if you get a 35 or a 25 mil focal length, I bet that you can also cheat that to go wider. So it's always like a game of how wide can this go? I'm gonna take a moment to say how much I hate that question. <laughs> how wide does it go? Um, so I can't seem to find anything at least easily accessible for it. Love um, it. Unfortunately, I'm very sorry. Okay. Do uh, <laughs> we can... Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, write down a number one to 20 people guess in comments and let people do it to the win. Uh, <laughs> that is a very interesting solution, but I don't feel it's really random. Let's do, who should I give this to? Oh man, now you guys put me on a spot. <laughs> I'm always looking at the bottom comment. So that's the first one I see. Not really fair. Two people went for 69, which I see is a very, very strong sense of originality here. Very good, guys. Very good stuff. Um, <laughs> and yes, I am using OBS for the Sony. But if I plug two Sonys, I have to switch them in the remote app and that creates rescaling within OBS and it was just unmanageable. Um, do I have thoughts or advices for phone filmmaking? I definitely should do more of it because the phone video didn't turn out bad. It turned out pretty good actually. And everyone I show it and say, oh, this was shot on my phone. People are like, what, really? So phones are underrated, it's a thing. Um, thank God we're just 32 people. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. There's something that I wanted to cover actually. Uh, a lot of people ask me why does the lens, the aperture thingy, the insert is in the middle of the lens. Like why don't I just do an insert that goes on the back, straight up in the back or in the front, like the Cinemore filters by Vid Atlantic. And here's the Cinemore filter. So as you can see here, just by this simple overlap, um, there's a lot of oval that doesn't go through the lens. And this is gonna lead to a cutout shape on the top and bottom of uh, the oval shape, basically. And the aperture is where the rays of light converge on the way to the sensor. So whatever shape you put in there, it's gonna be the cleanest and the most effective one to shape your light and save you like extra light stops and give you the best sharpest results no extra vignetting uh, i still have the vid atlantic because sometimes i'm i don't want to open like a 70 to 200 lens i just throw it on the front and find a focal length that works or my most expensive lenses i don't feel comfortable opening them up yet so that's why i have this vid atlantic filter the cinemorph but otherwise, if I can open and just throw the oval inside of the aperture, I prefer doing that. Uh, all right, B 
People are giving up. If you had the world's attention for 30 seconds, what would you say? As much as this channel is about lenses and equipment and anamorphic shooting, I think the most important 30 seconds today are about conversations about race and gender. So that's a subject that I also want to bring into the channel and I still haven't figured out how. If anyone's got suggestions, I'm very, very interested in discussing this stuff. And like, we don't have a lot of women filmmakers. It's numbers are incomparable. And it's something to that needs to be addressed. It needs to be talked about. Um, have I? So that's that's my 30 seconds. That's what I want to discuss. First person to join. Uh, I was going to give special giveaways for people who join the channel, but that's actually against YouTube's guidelines. So I took that out and all the giveaways are just for the people who are... Anyone can win. You don't get priority over joining. You get discount codes and other stuff like uh, my finds on eBay and... Uh, early access to some of the stuff that I've been working on, but you don't get priority on giveaways. <laughs> uh, Rocking Wolf chooses number 23.976, which is a great choice. Uh, VFX for Filmmakers asking about a, a guide on framing for anamorphic. I've, I'm working on something that is still secret because it's a huge project, but it does address that a little bit. It's the channel is very much focused on the technical aspects of anamorphic and not so much in the creative side of it. So that's the shift that I want to implement. It, it can even happen during these live streams. Um, yeah, Cameron, that's not a bad idea actually to end the stream and start another one from uh, the people that are here. Mm. We could also uh, comment on a recent video like that. Uh, I don't know if other people have commented on that. Oh, there's, the, there's a COVID video that doesn't have a lot of comments. Okay. It's unlisted. Okay, you want me to list that? Yeah, we can actually just post the link on the, oh, on yeah, the stream yeah. and everybody leaves a comment there. Okay, so we figured out a way. Let's, uh, let's thank you for holding there. Um, Aram is asking me what feature do I want on my next camera and brand. I think Panasonic's doing great with the anamorphic stabil stabilization. Nobody else is following that. So that's a thing. 4K 120 at Super 35 size sensor. I'm just going to say Panasonic is the brand. I, I'm just trying to get more use out of it. It's really, really good for anamorphic shooting. <laughs> um, what if someone comments multiple times? Uh, the service that we're using for picking the winner disregards duplicate comments. It's a single comment and that's it. If you comment a thousand times, it doesn't give you better odds. <laughs> which is the diameter? So Ramon is asking, which is the diameter of the filter of the Gallius 44? This is usually 49 mil on the front. Some of the newer versions have it at 52 mil. So make sure you check like the 44 M's have uh, 52 mil. Post random. Yeah, William, that's what we're doing. There's a video that has been unlisted for a little bit. And it was just when I came back from Brazil and that's what we're gonna post. There's like one comment there. So if that person gets the lens, we're doing the shuffle again. <laughs> okay, okay the, it's, it's up. the link is up. Uh, just go on that video, leave a comment, and we're gonna finally figure out who's gonna take this lens home. I'm going to the post office this afternoon, okay, and I'm gonna ship it. King Posse. Yeah, we're filtering out, yeah, poor Leon. Nice guy, sorry Leon, if you're watching this later. Uh, thank you, Tiago, thank you very much. Uh, I have a solution. I have script. Sophia, and please send me send me an email uh, or send me a message or leave a comment here in this video after the stream's done. I'd love to talk more about what you have in mind, and I'm I'm very interested in collaborating with other people that are 
on this gear uh, discussing trend that we're in. Uh, Chris is saying that he loves seeing female DPs killing in the industry. There's nothing that makes me happier. Um, but still, they're so hard to come by. Like, name 10, people only get to three. While if you're like, oh yeah, name famous DPs, most people won't go for a female. So, uh, the angle of it, interest, is I don't think it's a thing. I think cameras are oriented towards men or masculinity. Uh, but I'm not going to expand too much on this. This is something I'm still studying. Mm. I never want anything in my life. <laughs> yeah, I never want anything in my life either. So I can relate. Um, 41 likes. Now we have more likes than viewers. Good stuff. Um, did everyone leave comments on that link? Uh, don't miss your chance. I think we're going to do that for a few more minutes and then we're going to pick the winner. So there's a link in the stream for a video uh, for the giveaway. It's not related to this video. It's just what we're using as a buffer for taking in comments. So go there, leave your name. We're going to do the giveaway. All right. Who else? Uh, William is asking if the Zcam is one of the best M4 uh, Micro Four Thirds for anamorphic. I never used it, so I really can't argue on that subject. I'm very happy with the Panasonic. Very, very happy with the Panasonic. Especially because of stabilization, as I mentioned. Um, I'm just here fidgeting with this lens. Look at that. Beautiful. <laughs> Kind of off topic. How do you stay motivated to shoot a new video or create content? That's from Burning Metal Freaka. Tough one. Back when I came from Brazil, like in the beginning of March, I had a splurge of ideas and I shot like 10 videos in a row. And then I really struggled coming up with new ideas, which was the whole reason we started this live streaming stuff. Um, Sure, there's always something to talk about that hasn't been discussed before. Even in this channel with 200 something videos, uh, something that I haven't discussed before. Um, but sitting down and writing and doing the research and doing the tests and putting everything together is a big challenge. So finding motivation is tough at times. I would definitely be more motivated if more people joined the channel or just subscribed. So if you're here and you're watching this, this is your chance. Um, all right, my secret recipe for stuck filter rings. It's very simple. You just leave the lens there and you forget about it and you never use it again. <laughs> did it a few times. Or you just break the filter. I've also did that a few times. Just get uh, pliers and chip away the edges until you can snap the filter in half. Doesn't work very well if you love the filter, like if it's a pro mist or something, but if it's just a UV or some 3D printed version that I put together, I have no regrets in breaking it. <laughs> uh huh. I don't think 50-50 quotes for anything is just for the sake of it as a good thing. Should be equal opportunities based on one's skill and eagerness, not positive discrimination. Uh, Agree and disagree. I'm not going to expand on this one. I think that to begin with, uh, people are not given the same chances, which leads to different quotas. And that's applicable even to like fields where women are the majority and there's very few men. Uh, that's like something that is expected of women. Uh, but that's not what we're discussing here today. That's just for the future. <laughs> Okay, now this is really picking up. <laughs> I've cut out filter rings, uh, Kimbob 3000, yes. Best thing. Honestly, breaking equipment on purpose, very pleasurable experience. <laughs> um, should we do this raffle? Okay, um, how many comments do we have? I'm, let me double check. Hey, Lucas, glad to see you here. Uh, I forgot to post about it uh, today, I guess. I'm still working on this uh, marketing thing. 
it's a challenge. So if you want a chance to win this lens, just uh, go and post a comment. How are we doing? We have like 30 people here, so I'm expecting like 30 people there. Uh, we have, have 25 comments. Okay, 25. So five people here are missing out on the chance. We're, uh, I'm assuming you don't want to run for it. A few people brought it up on the stream that they don't want to be eligible for winning. So uh, thank you for volunteering this chance to others. Uh, Blake, have you found something to raffle among the comments of yeah, that video? All right, sounds excellent. <laughs> Is there an option for... Yeah, there's filtering users. Okay, uh, so we can do that. We can even like maybe I'll share, the share the screen and add okay. it to the corner. So we'll see who wins this thing in real time. Fun. Oh, wow. Man, my heart's racing. Uh, <laughs> uh, Barry O'Brien is asking if I ever used the star filters instead of just streak lines. I have not. Uh, star filters for me are very 90s, so I have not used them ever, I think. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, I'm ready to press it whenever, uh, whenever you call it. All right. Let's, uh, we got the, the raffle going on, so we're going to share the screen, and uh, let's see who's getting this. Uh, let's go. All of the advertisement. Look at that. Yeah. Let cover <laughs> that up. <laughs> uh, okay. Get comments. And there's a start button somewhere. Ah, uh, there it is. Okay. One in 25 chances. That's pretty good odds. It's like, um, yeah, 4% chance. Pete Laverty. All right. Pete Laverty? Laverty? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pete Laverty. Where are you? Are you here? If you are here, please come forward and, uh, I guess send me an email um, or how do how do you send me a message on Facebook just find me on Facebook uh, <laughs> and we'll get this thing on your way uh, congratulations okay let's get rid of this yeah uh, <laughs> Lucas you are a great so someone was asking earlier about motivation to making content for this channel, and I want to thank Lucas here. Uh, put him on the spot. He has inspired me to do so many videos and has given me support on so many of like his actual creations that I'm just sharing and trying to tell people that it's his thing because he's not doing his own videos. You should do it. Um, <laughs> But yeah, Lucas Pop is a giant inspiration for this channel. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Oh, here's Pete. Okay, Pete. Uh, yeah, send me a message on Facebook and uh, I'll send this this afternoon to you. Uh, cheers, Andre. I think this is it. We ran like 25 minutes longer than expected. So if anybody got closing thoughts or questions, this is the time. Um, I'm gonna write down Pete Laverty here. I've also got you. Is it gonna be mirrored? Uh, it looks good. Nice. Woohoo! <laughs> uh, giveaway for Vazen lenses. I wish. I didn't even keep mine, I send them back. So they're not just giving them away and I can't afford a $3,000 giveaway. Uh, maybe in the future if more people join the channel. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, I think we had more than two Brazilians at the same time. You, ju you guys are just quiet. So uh, next time I do this, just share it. Help me, help me get more people into this. I can see why people would be interested in getting less people so there's more chance of winning. But we'll figure this out. Um, thank you very much for joining us today. And uh, I'll see you next week 